Hello and welcome back to another of these videos. Um, this one's going to be a little different than usual as I've got quite a lot to get through and uh, as you can see the PDF file for this one contains textures to create a few skulls and bones and that kind of thing and, uh, and also a couple of different statues. But uh, rather than trying to squeeze all of that into one episode I'll be covering all of this stuff in two separate videos and in this one I'll concentrate on the piles of old bones which uh, should end up looking something like this. So, let's get started. Okay then, the first thing we'll need to do is cut out the skulls. And, uh, and when doing this, it's best to leave a bit of excess paper along the top and bottom. Then, when we cut out each individual skull, we'll trim the sides just inside the black border. So, something like this. Next, we'll take a regular sized drinking straw and, uh, and just rough up the surface with a piece of sandpaper. Then we can apply some glue to the back of the skull texture and, uh, and simply wrap it around the straw. And there we go. Okay, for the rib cage, we'll be using an empty toilet roll tube that's been cut in half. But uh, before we start, we'll need to make sure that one of the ends is cut nice and straight. So that's all I'm doing here. Then we'll cut out around one inch of the rib texture, um, fold that in half, just to get an idea of the midpoint, and, uh, and then apply some glue to the back. Then we'll wrap half of the texture around each side of the tube, and uh, the aim here is to get the gap between two of the ribs to line up with the edge of the cardboard itself. Um, it is a bit hard to see that here, so I've, uh, I've included a still in the bottom corner, but uh, essentially we're trying to make it so that the pattern's position is the same on both sides. Right, the, uh, the final part of this preparation stage is simply cutting out a one inch section of the plain bone texture. And all we're going to do with this is glue it to a piece of thin cardboard. And uh, we can then put all three pieces to one side to dry. Okay then, for this next part I've had to zoom in quite close. But uh, here's the skull piece now that the glue's dry and uh, all I'm doing here is folding it in half. Then we'll take a sharp pair of scissors and uh, when we trim the top off, we're going to do it at a slight angle. So, something like that. And then I'll do the same thing again for the bottom. And there you go. And if I just unsquash that, um, it should end up looking something like this. And as you can see, the front is roughly twice as high as the back. Okay. Now we can take the plain texture that's been glued to some thin cardboard and uh, using a hole punch we can punch out a small circle. Then we'll take a foam sheet or a mouse mat or similar and uh, using something with a round end we'll push the circle down into the foam um, just to give it a slightly domed shape. All we need to do then is add a tiny blob of hot glue to the top of the skull and, uh, and then glue the circle in place. And there you go, there's our first little skull. Um, it might not be fantastic looking, but uh, it should do the job. Right then, next we're going to work on the rib cage. And uh, if you remember, we glued the rib texture to both sides of a toilet roll tube. So the first thing we'll need to do is trim the texture along the bottom, um, just so that it ends on a whole rib. And, uh, and also make sure that it's also removed any excess from the other side. Then, we're going to cut out a kind of hump shape on either side of the spine, so that uh, when it's done, it looks a little bit like a cobra's hood, um, if that makes sense. So, something like that. Next, we'll need to make cuts along the black lines between all of the ribs, um, just down to the spine that is, and, uh, and we'll need to do that for both sides. So, I'll just speed this part up while I'm doing that. And when we're done, we can exaggerate the existing curve of the toilet roll tube a little, just by bending it inwards. And uh, if that's not enough, we can also take a barbecue skewer or something similar and, uh, and use that to get even more of a curve. So here I am just bending the ribs into a more appropriate shape. And, uh, and once we're happy with that, we can also bend and twist the spine a little bit, um, just to separate the ribs and also to make it look a bit more realistic. And there you go. I think we'll call this one done. Okay, now we just need to make a few bones, and, uh, and for this we'll be using the plain texture again. And uh, the easiest way to do this is to first cut a curve in one direction, like that, and then cut a curve in the opposite direction, um, leaving around a millimetre or so at the closest point. Then all we need to do is trim it to a suitable size, and uh, with any luck that should provide us with a reasonable looking bone shape. So, there you go. 
And I'll just quickly do another one using exactly the same technique. So, something like that. And uh, here's a few more that I made earlier. It's also worth pointing out that uh, we can use some of the leftover pieces to cut small bone fragments as well. And uh, we can use these to represent bits of jawbone or pelvis and, uh, and so on. Okay, so now all we need to do is glue the whole thing together. And uh, for this example, I'll be gluing everything to this base here. So there's the rib cage, and uh, I'll just apply a thin line of hot glue along the back and, uh, and then stick that down in place. There you go. And then we'll add a spot of hot glue to the inside of the skull, um, being careful not to burn your fingers, and, uh, and do the same for that. But uh, before we start gluing all of the bones in place, I'll, uh, I'll use the end of the paintbrush again, just to give the small fragments a slight curve. Um, basically to make them look a bit more three-dimensional. Then we can take each of the bones, um, apply some glue to the back, just by rubbing them over the glue stick, and, uh, and then stick them down in place. So I'll go ahead and do just that for the rest of the pieces, and uh, as you can see, it's sometimes useful to have a toothpick to hand, uh, just to help with the positioning, and, uh, and also to help press them down. Another option might be to, uh, to ditch the glue stick in this instance, and uh, instead use PVA to secure the bones in place. Uh, or maybe even a tiny spot of super glue. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, so uh, when we're done, we should end up with a nice little bone pile that looks something like this. Though uh, I will point out that you don't need to glue it to a base like this, and uh, a slightly better option might be to glue it to some clear plastic, uh, like I've done with these two pieces here. So yeah, um, that's it for the first part of this episode. Um, as I say, in part two we'll take a look at how to make the statues. So uh, I hope to see you then. Bye for now.